Hello everyone. Uh, as I have said, I am Farhan Hussain Chaudhary, and now I am going to just start a little slide show before going into it. So again, uh, I am Farhan Hussain Chaudhary. I am a software developer from Bangladesh and one of the staff member at FreeCodeCamp. And um, like as I have said, I am passionate about learning new stuff and also writing contents for articles for them. Uh, Apart from Abiel, I have also worked with a bunch of other companies, uh, most notably Adeva and Honey Badger. And you may or may not know me from two of my most popular works. Uh, those are the Docker Handbook and the Kubernetes Handbook. So today we are going to talk about PHP and TypeSense. So first let me explain what is TypeSense. So TypeSense is an open source type tolerant search engine that is optimized for blazing cross searches. So if you have worked with uh, something like Elasticsearch or Algolia in the past, so TypeSense is similar, but it's free, it's open source, and it's fast. So today I'm going to demonstrate how you can use TypeSense with your PHP application to build a robust search feature. Now, one thing that I want to clarify from the get-go, I will not program the entire application or the software live in this session because not only that will be a huge time-consuming task, but also I I wanted to like avoid any uh, embarrassing situations like getting stuck with a bug for, I don't know, maybe five hours. So yeah, let's continue. So first, let me show you how an application with TypeSense looks like. So let's imagine that I have a, a bookshop where people can come search for books and uh, buy any of them. So this bookshop, as you can see here, uh, this is a browser screen. You, you can call it the client. It, it can be anything like React, Vue.js or anything. Okay. So the front end has a backend service right here, the bookshop. And as it says, this backend service serves the site that means whenever someone comes up to the bookshop uh, sees the details of a book tries to buy it this backend service or api would be responsible for that there is also another service the types and service running here which is uh, almost similar to the one here but this is only responsible for serving the searches okay as it says here i'll serve the searches so whenever someone comes in to my bookshop, searches for a book, TypeSense will be responsible for serving that search because that's what TypeSense is made for. It, it's a dedicated service for doing searches, okay? So as you can see, here is collection and documents. Let me explain those two words. So basically, my, my bookshop service here has a database of its own. It can be anything. It can be either MySQL, it can be MongoDB or any database engine that, that you prefer. And the TypeSense service here ha also has a database of its own. The bookshop database holds information about my users, all the purchases, maybe their billing information, their names and the books. But the TypeSense service here only holds the information that the user may look for. So in this bookshop, a user can come in and search for books. That means the TypeSense database here only knows about the books and nothing else. Okay. If you have worked with NoSQL databases in the past, like MongoDB or something like that, then you may know what collections are. So collections are a bunch of documents, same kind of documents put together. And these documents that I have been talking about are individual books. So maybe we have a document for the alchemist that Sankal has read recently. So that single document will hold the name of the book, the name of the authors. There can be multiple actually, uh, a cover image, the average rating and the year of publishing okay and when we put together a bunch of documents like the alchemist the murder on the orient express maybe 
uh, the art of thinking clearly and a bunch of other books we, we put them together into a collection so like i said if you have worked with something like mongodb in the past this entire architecture should be really really easy to understand for you but if you are from a background where you have worked with relational databases a lot like mysql or uh, postgres or oracle then a collection in type sense can be uh, compared to a table in mysql so imagine there is a table that contains the information about books and each row in that table is a book so the documents will be those rows i i guess it's clear enough so i'm going to my next slide now i will give you a live demo but before i jump into the demo i want to clarify that uh, i will not program the entire application live because not only it will take a lot of time but also i don't want to get stuck in some bug or maybe some debugging situation i don't want to do that online so i have only uh, already built the application i have also written an article on it so i'll just go through how i did it with php also i am using laravel as my as my framework of choice but you can use anything you like like symphony code igniter or uh, slim there are a bunch of php uh, frameworks out there i use laravel most of the time so that's what i have picked for this article but i believe if you understand php and if you understand some uh, some common design patterns like service containers and object oriented programming you should be reproduce this this search application with any framework in the earth okay so i'll just close my uh, slides now and i'll go to my code but before i go to my code i would like like to show you the repository where i have cloned it from it's on github.com slash my github user handle slash using type sense with php you don't have to memorize it i have recently written an article on the avial platform about the same topic and you can just go ahead and uh, it should be somewhere here just just give me a second yeah so yeah you can find the project on this repository so this is the link to the repository so you can just go ahead and clone that down okay so i already have it cloned uh, as you can see this is the full laravel project so i don't have any database set up right now so i'll just leave those empty it's all about type sense and the rest of the things are pretty vanilla okay so before we jump into programming in php we have to install type sense and spin up a new type sense service so let's go to type sense.org and in the docs you will actually find a link to a guide so the difference between a guide and api, API reference is guide the guide section are like tutorials that holds your hand but the api reference is for those people who already know what they're doing but they're ju they just want to look up a particular function or something like that okay so i'll 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 use both in this session but you can go ahead and use the one you like so first let's go to install type sense and there are multiple ways to install type sense so type sense is built with c++ it comes with as a compiled binary file and you can just download that and run in any of the platforms out there it can be mac linux or windows whatever you like so right now i am on windows and what i will be doing is i will use docker to run my type sense server yeah so these are the instructions for spinning up a new server but what i'm going to do here i will just quickly go to my article and i actually have the line ready here that i want to execute today okay just first let me copy this from here i will 
create an empty file, paste the entire article and just explain it to you first. Hey Sankal, can you confirm whether my uh, font size is big enough or not? Okay, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, let me just increase it. Yeah, is, it, is it fine now? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, good. So let's begin with the first part, which is Docker container run. Just wait a minute, I will just turn off my camera because I guess it's taking up quite a lot of bandwidth. okay so the first part here docker container run is the standard command that we use uh, for running new containers with docker if you know docker you should be familiar with this command already okay then the next part publish 8108 colon 8108 what happens is when you run type sense within a docker container it actually runs on 8108 so if you want to talk to the type sense service you will have to send a http requests to port 8108 so what this publish command does is it maps the 8108 port from inside the container to my local local systems 8108 okay so then there is a detach so i don't have to keep my terminal open the whole time I, I'm running this container and then there is the volume the volume option so what happens is when we give TypeSense a large amount of data TypeSense actually indexes it it kind of memorizes it so that whenever someone comes in and searches for a book or anything else TypeSense can answer almost immediately so all those data has to go somewhere and inside the container there is a directory called slash data on the root this is where all those data stays so i am using volume to mount that data directory from inside the container to a to a outside directory on my local system so that even if sometime my type sense container goes down or crashes for some reason the data will be there and i will i will not have to feed it the data once again and i'll just change this from temporary directory to my home Farham. i i have actually already made this directory ready to go before the session so yeah i have that available to me after that after that i have the image name type sense slash type sense so this is how you access images from docker hub and the tag is 0.21.0 i believe there is a new release of type sense uh, that has come out recently it, it, it's much better than the previous version but given my project was built during type sense 0.21.0 i'll just keep that to avoid any any incompatibility okay but you should always use the latest one then there is the data directory which is slash data now this is something that you have to keep in mind so if you are saying to type sense that it should use slash data as the data directory you will have to update that here as well because in the, if you if you change this one type sense will save the data in a different directory than slash data so you will have to change that here as well this is standard docker stuff uh, like if you are not sure what, what i'm talking about maybe you should go ahead and read a little bit more about docker okay finally we have api key this is like the password to your type sense server if you do not have a secure api key then anyone will be able to come in and talk to your type sense server and we never want that we want our servers to be secure our services to be secure at, at any given time okay so i'll just copy this entire command i'll close my unnecessary text file i'll go to my uh, 
my command line and I'll just paste it here. So I actually have Docker running already. So I can just type this command and press enter. Now, one thing that you should keep in mind that I have already downloaded the Docker image uh, yesterday, maybe. That's why the, the operation was really fast. But you, if you have never used TypeSense with Docker before, then it may take a bit more time to download the image from the internet first and then run the container. Once we have this output, this is actually the ID of the container, we can actually check whether the container has been created or not by executing the docker container ls command. So what this does is it, it lists out all the running containers on my system and as you can see I have a new container running and it actually matches this id actually matches the first few characters of the full length id. It uses the typesense image uh, it has been created 40 seconds ago. It has been running for 38 seconds now and it's accessible on port 8108. So now that my server is running, let's, let's check whether it's working fine or not. I will just use Postman for that. I've already said that TypeSense is like just like another service that you have you have made for any of your front-end applications and you can use something like postman to talk with it so i have created a bunch of uh, requests here to try out the types and service and i'll just go ahead and use that so if I hover my mouse over the host variable, as you can see, it says localhost 8108, which is uh, the URL where my types and service is running. And the slash health API actually lets me know whether the types and service is ready for requests or not. So I'll just send a simple get request to that and as you can see it says okay true and the status is 200 which means type sense is now ready and we can give this bunch of data about books and it will be ready to serve our searches okay okay then i'll have to come back to my php project now i am going to execute two commands from my Laravel application, but I will not explain them yet. I will just execute them. I will demonstrate how you can work with TypeSense from Postman. Then I will come back to this project and explain what I did before, okay? So let me execute the command. PHP artisan collection. So I have already said you that the TypeSense database it's like a NoSQL database and it has collections, okay? So this command here, PHP artisan collection create is for creating those collections in the server. So I have written this command specifically for this article and this session. I will explain how I have done it, but for now, let's just execute it, okay? So as you can see, it, has, it says schemas created successfully which is kind of wrong. I should have said collections created successfully, but let's roll with it, roll with it. The next command that I will run is, let me have a look. I've forgotten my own commands. Okay, so data index. PHP artisan data index. Uh, before I execute this command, I, will li I would like to show you the data that I'm indexing right now. And indexing just means inserting the data into TypeSense's database. Let's keep it simple. So if I go into TypeSense, then data, there is a JSON-L file called books.json-L. And each line in this file is a book. So if we pick 
one random book like this one so this is the book chasing the night chasing the night and the authors are iris johansson publication year is 2010 there is an id there is an average rating and there is an image url as well so each line in this jsonl book is jsonl file is a book and there are almost 9980 books so we'll just index all of this into our types and server okay and in this project you can do that by simply executing php artisan data index now let me give you an a disclaimer this command is going to fail but there is nothing to worry about let's give it a moment yeah like i said it was mean to fail so the problem is that this data set here maybe contains uh here as you can see there are some empty titles and things like that and because of those uh inconsistencies in data my script fails uh, at some point of execution but I believe I have already indexed around 7,000 7, books on the database of Tyson. So yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, enough talking. Let me show you how you can search for a book in Tyson. So I'll just deactivate them. So what I can do is I can make a get request to Tyson server slash collections slash the name of the collection which is books in our case because you can see it here clearly it says books right and then we'll go into slash documents and then slash search so after search we have a number of query parameters here the first one is q and this q parameter holds the value that the user wants to input like if someone comes in and wants to search the book the alchemist okay so that's what the q parameter is for the user input and then there is another parameter called query by which says title for now that means that i want to search the alchemist by title I can also search by authors. Maybe I just want to search for books that are written by Paolo Coelho. I can do that as well. So let's go with title for now. And if we perform a search, yeah, we have around 3622 books. Now in the beginning, it may uh, surprise you because there is maybe only a few books named the alchemist at least i don't think there are 3622 books named alchemist there can be i'm not sure but i don't think there are so what type sense does is it doesn't match the query exactly so if you type the alchemist it will not only return the alchemist but it will also return books that has the word the or alchemist in the title see if we if we look into the results the first one is uh, written by peter f hamilton and the title is the neutronium alchemist so as you can see it has the and alchemist but it also has neutronium in the title then the second one is michael scott the alchemist so this is a good example of typo tolerance okay so even though I have written alchemist with M-I-S-T, Typesense was smart enough to look for M-Y-S-T as well. So even if one of the users comes in and uh, types in the search wrong, they'll, they'll get a result anyway. That's how Google does as well. So there is also Suzanne Collins. I don't know. Where is the actual the alchemist? 
man yeah, i really thought i will get the paulo coelho one but yeah but let it be so we have got around how many books here just let me check yeah so we have around 10 books here the query was for the alchemist and the collection name was books now let's search by authors okay so i can just change the query by parameter to authors and then change the alchemist to something like um i read a lot of books yeah i got the christie and we can perform the search again and now we will have all the books written by agatha christie so here is 10 little niggers i haven't read that book though. murder in the calais coach i guess the mysterious affair at styles and so on so i think you 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 now have a basic idea of how you can talk to the types and server now one question that i would like to answer uh before i go into coding is what happens if i want to have a look at all the books then i can pass an asterisk as my query so an asterisk simply means everything so if i run this query i will get all the books in the database but i will get only 10 because that's uh, how many books types and returns by default but i can change that by changing the per page to around 50 uh, now i will get 50 books yeah there are 50 books now one last thing that i would like to show is the sort by variable and what it does is it lets you sort all these books by one of these variables okay so i i'll sort them by average rating and descending if i hit send you will see the first one is 4.82 the second one is 4.77 4.77 4.76 and so on you get the idea right okay so that's how you can talk to type sense and perform searches in general using http requests but searches can be a lot more complex than this Let's imagine that you want to filter your search. So you want to search for all the Harry Potter books, you want to query by the title, you want it sorted by average rating descending and you only want the books which are rated above 4 in average rating, okay? So if I, if I uh, execute this search, you will see I will get books only rated higher than 4. the average rating section okay and as you can see the query parameter has become really hard to infer now so if if you are trying to make these requests just dynamically there is chance that you will end up making a mistake typesons the people behind typesons they know it they know that we will suffer because of this complexity and thus they have created something called the type sense clients okay let's let's go ahead and see what the clients are so i'll just go ahead and uh, go to again i am in the guide section and i'm go to installing a client and they have official client libraries for javascript php python ruby and they also have community contributed open source client libraries for go c sharp java rust and dart and if you are a programmer then maybe you can build a client of your own as well so what do this client do so they allow us to simplify uh, the 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 tasks that we can do with types terms and i i'll show you that Let's open the PHP client library. And let's scroll down. 
So in order to install the TypeSense PHP client in one of your projects, all you have to do is you can execute composer require php http slash curl client and TypeSense slash TypeSense PHP. So the actual client library is the second one and the first one is for making the HTTP requesters. So what these clients do is they can make all the complicated HTTP requesters on behalf of you. It will let you write plain PHP code. It will, it will understand that PHP code and it will then make the requesters on behalf of you. And for that, it needs a client for making HTTP requests. That's, that's as simple as that. So curl client is a, a really well-known PHP HTTP client and I'll be using that in my project. So yeah, let's, let's just close that. I have already installed the library in my project. So if I go inside composer.json and as you can see, PHP HTTP curl client has been installed. TypeSense slash TypeSense PHP has been installed. So I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, now let's scroll down a little and go to building a search application. Let's go to there. Let's go to PHP. Now, according to the documentation they have, need a client object in order to talk to TypeSense, okay? So uh, the library that we just installed comes with a class called client. We can use that client class to instantiate a new object with all these settings. And then we can use that object to make requests to TypeSense, okay? So what information do we need? We need the API key, obviously, as I said, it's, it's like the password for your TypeSense service. And then we need a list of nodes. So as you can see, the list of nodes is an array. It's because TypeSense supports high availability and you can actually run multiple TypeSense services and juggle the requests between them for load balancing stuff. And for each node, the client needs to know its host address. Right now it will be local host for us, but if you are running your TypeSense service on a DigitalOcean server on AWS, or they also have their own cloud, cloud service, as far as I remember. Yeah, deploy on TypeSense cloud. So you can use that also. They will need to know the port, which is 8108 by default, and they will need to know the protocol. So if you are using insecure HTTP protocol, which is on port 80, you can just say HTTP here, but if it's HTTPS, then you can write HTTPS. Also, there is connection timeout seconds, two seconds, which means if for some reason TypeSense doesn't respond, respond, within two seconds of making a request, the request will be canceled. That's what this for. So now let's go ahead and create a TypeSense client in our PHP project. So if you have worked with PHP in the past, you may know there is something called service container. Uh, it, it's in Laravel, it's in Symfony, it's in Lumen, I guess it's in Slim3 and I guess it's in Codeigniter as well. I'm not sure though but I know it's available on most of the good frameworks out there. So I'll go to providers, I'll go to app service provider and inside that service provider, as you can see, I have bound the client class to my service container. So the service container is like a box. I can create an object from a class and put it inside that box. And whenever I need that object, I can say the service container hey dude i just kept an object inside you give me that and the service container will immediately give you that object so that's what this this app bind function does it just binds an instance of the client class inside the service container so inside this this callback function i have returned a new client it uses uh an API key from the config 
the host, the port, the protocol, and connection timeout seconds too. And if you go inside the env file or dot env file in my project, you will see that I have the type sense key, type sense host, type sense port, and type sense protocol written here. And I have also created a config file for type sense that returns all these env variable within an array and that's how i can access them using the config helper method in laravel okay so i i did this i could have also accessed the env variables directly but that's not good the config values can be cached that's why i did this this way and this should be something very common to Laravel developers. Okay, so now we have an instance of the client class within our service container. So let's go back to one of the commands that I ran earlier. Ran earlier. The create collection command. So what this does is it actually creates a new empty collection within the type sense database and how did i do this here within the handle method or handle function rather so i have taken an instance of the client as an input and the service container in laravel is intelligent enough smart enough to know that i have bound a client instance already so it will just pass it through this is uh, this is dependency injection you may or may not know it but you should know it okay next i am looking inside the type sense slash schemas directory okay so here is type sense and schemas oh look there is another php file in here let's look at it okay so this is how a schema look like or looks like so a schema is the shape of your collection so i am saying that i want to build a collection named books and it will have the following fields it will have the title of type string it will have the authors of type string array ignore the facet for now i will have image url of type string and so on i have in 32 in 32 float and you can just understand this. So this is how you describe a schema for type sense. And if I, if I go back to the documentation, you can also look at this in the documentation as well. You don't have to remember anything. You can just copy it from here. And if I go to the API reference and collections, I guess, um, in the right place, yeah. So here is a list of all the fields, uh, arguments rather, that you can use when creating a new schema. These are all the field types. There are all, these are all the arrays and there are a bunch of other things that you can read on your own later on, okay? So we now have a schema for our books that we can use to create a new collection. So I'm just loading that file from type sense as schema yeah that's that's what i'm doing i'm scanning the directory array div does what it does i uh, well i i really don't remember why i did this oh okay okay so i did this because i didn't want to scan the dot dot and dot directory i just wanted to scan the type sense schema directory with only the books.php files that were within this schema directory okay okay so i'm uh, i have started a loop that goes through all the files found within the directory and calls the client collections create function and passes the schema through so this client collections create function actually creates a, a collection in the type sense server and it takes a schema this this array here as its input 
so that's what i'm passing so if 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 i want to simplify that it will look something like this when it inside that array i will have everything that i have written here okay yeah so this is how it may look in the end okay. so i'll just erase that for now okay once i have created the collection i just output a message message that says is schema created successfully again well, just correct it so i can actually have multiple schemas here like the books and then maybe authors and this script will be able to go through all of them and create this collection the next command that i ran was the index data collection so this command is used for inserting the books information from the json l file here into the server okay so let's go ahead and have a look at the handle function again i am taking the client object as input or i'm injecting the dependency for this function here uh, i'm going inside the type sense data directory then i am scanning the base directory here yeah so the data directory here okay. uh, i'll get the books.jsonl file as as my result then i looping through all the files that i have found inside the data directory yeah and first i am taking the jsonl file within a variable then i am getting all the file content i am exploding that by new line this is because what php does is php loads the entire file as a single string or single line so i i have to split that entire line into separate lines using the explode function then i am going to loop through the individual lines and call the client collections collection name which is books here so the file is named books so it will just take books as the collection name then documents then create so what this client collections documents create function does is it creates a new document within a given collection okay so once the data indexing process is done i am outputting a new message data indexed successfully now again if i go back to the guides <coughs> sorry my voice is a little broken today because of the cold So this is the one. This is the code snippet that I took and then expanded upon. Okay. All right. So now we have created our collection. We have indexed the data. Now it's time for us to make do some searches. Let's go ahead and do that. Just give me a moment. I would like to drink some water. <laughs> okay. So, for the first time, let's go ahead and have a look at our application. For that, let's look at the application. Sorry. And that in my browser okay so this is how the application looks it, it it's a really simple application with html css and no javascript at all so if i go ahead and look for the alchemist as you can see i have got all the books that has alchemist in it and i really don't know why great gatsby is there but let's just roll with it okay oh because of the da I can also search for Harry Potter. I can also search for Agatha Christie. But in that case, I will have to change the query by from title to authors. Title is the default one. I will have to change it to authors it's to search. And yeah, I can see all the books by Agatha Christie. Now, let's go back to my code and show you how I did that. 
So inside the routes directory, I have web.php, which is the go-to place for registering new routes in Laravel. Maybe you have something different in your in your framework of choice, but the main thing should be same. You have a controller, you have a route, and you have a handler function. Okay, so I have a single route, the root route here, and I have a single controller which is the search controller. So let's go ahead and see what we have inside the search controller. Yeah. So this is a single action controller, which means I have only one function within it called invoke. In Laravel, if you have a single function within your controller, you can make it invocable so that you will not have to specify the function name here this is strictly laravel oriented so let's just skip that so i have a variable q and i have another variable called query by and i hope that you have guessed already that what these are for the q is for the input from the user and query by is for holding what i'm querying by okay so when a request comes to this page from from this form here i will show the form code as well form here i check whether the request has a query or not so if someone comes in and types nothing at all here i will have to detect that okay if, if i hit search yeah there is nothing at all i will have to detect that so I am checking whether the request has Q or not because in the beginning it doesn't has Q. It has nothing at all. And then if someone searches with an empty query parameter like this, you, know, you really can search for empty. But I'm checking that anyway, if the query parameter is empty or not. If that's true, like the request has Q and it's not empty, in that case, I will assign that to my Q variable. Otherwise, I will assign asterisk. So the search doesn't fail. So let's come in here and debug my application and let me show you the variable in action. Okay, so I, I have die dumped here. And as you can see, if I pass Q with an empty string, it defaults to an asterisk. I guess I can zoom in a little. yeah so i have star asterisk here but if i search for harry potter i will have harry potter in here okay so that that's how it is next let's have a look at the query by parameter so again if the request has query by and it's not empty i will keep that otherwise i will default it to title so let's die dump here as well. Yeah, so it defaults to title. But if I explicitly say that I want to search by the authors. So what did I do wrong? I don't know if it just let me clear this one refresh that okay so that's what i do if i change to authors and i search by agatha christie i bring back the diadem and hit search yeah as you can see it says authors now because the query by has changed to authors there Okay, so I hope that you have understood the if elseS here. Finally, I'm creating a new array that looks a lot like the request we made earlier. Let's go back to Postman for a while. As you can see, I have Q here and I have query by here. So that's what I'm trying to uh, reproduce here. Okay, so creating an array that has Q and query by all together next we can use the client to perform our search so we'll go to client collections books 
and then documents and then search function and pass the query parameters and we will we'll get the search results now one thing that i would like to show you here that if i uh a second put the code and postman side by side if, if you have a look so here we have the client and here we have the host then we are calling collections and here we have collections then slash books so we are we are passing books as an index to this array then we have documents here we also have documents here then we have search and then we have the search function here as well so this goes to show how fluid or how seamless these client libraries are if you understand the searches here in postman or any other http client you like you will have no issue understanding how these client libraries work that's how smooth the development experience is with type sense okay so let's i dump the search results here and see what we have got running here let's i got the pst yeah so this is the result we have and if we go back to our postman service authors pst we perform a search and if we look it let's uh, first collapse this yeah and if if we have a look at them side by side you will see first we have the facet counts we have the facet counts we have the pounds we have the hits array we also have the hits array we have the out of variable so out of 9979 books same here it says page 1 it says page 1 then the request parameters as an array here here is request parameter as an array here and then how long it took to perform the search just just give me a sec just give me a sec everyone just give me a sec oh, sorry sorry everyone i'm back I just had to move for a second. So yeah, again, let's go back to my search results. Yeah, so that's how the search results look in my PHP code, and that's how it looks in Postman. Again, as you can see, these are very similar. They're identical, to be honest. Now you may have seen that this hits array actually contains all the books that. Type sense has found. Now, in a real life project, you may have used for all these variables like found, out of page one, if you want to implement pagination, request parameters, and so on. But in this small project, I really don't have a lot of usage for them. So I will only take out the hits array out of the search result and put that inside a variable called books. That's just Here's that line here and let's dd books. As you can see, this this is a simple array of the books. Then I'll flash the request here. Uh, I will explain what this line is for later on. And then I am returning a view, which is a simple HTML blade view in Laravel. And I am passing the books array using the compact function now you may not like the compact function yourself then you can use something like this that will work as well but compact function looks cleaner okay now let's go to my blade view so i'll go to resources this is where all my static files live first let me show you the layout 
so the layout is nothing fancy i have a title here and i have a css for bulma css that's what i am using in this project and then i have a uh, empty body tag an empty body tag and i am yielding my content here so i'll just go to my books blade so i am extending this site.blade.php layout and i am populating the content part so right in in here inside the body so i have a container a section column column and then i have a form so this is a get form that submits to the search route which is the home route itself uh, if i go to back to web uh, this is i have only one route and that's doing everything so i have a select here a drop down which is this one and i have an input the input is here for the queue variable and then i have a submit button that is search that's all there is in this form and if you are familiar with laravel you may already know what what this old function does what it does is it actually persists this value uh between requests so if if i search for agatha christie the page actually refreshes really quick and the old function uh persists this old input here if i didn't have this this would have been empty after each refresh okay so after that form i have a if statement here that checks whether the controller has returned any books or not so if i go back to my controller search controller here and remove this part with an empty array then i i'll get found nothing because i am actually checking whether the books array has anything or not if it has anything i will look through each of those books and output them as a pretty looking card here and if it doesn't in the else i will say found nothing so let's revert that back to refresh and another thing that you may have noticed is this nested for each loop so the way this books data set was designed that a book can have multiple authors that's why the authors field was passed as an array and uh, i am looping through that authors array and printing each author name and once i have reached the last variable in the loop i will not print any commas so i think yeah as you can see agatha christie and i cannot read the name here and there is no comma that's what this if is for so if the loop is ending there will be no commas and if it's not ending then there will be commas so yeah that's pretty much it for this search application i really hope that you have understood how you can use type sense for searches how you can talk to type sense using postman as well as one of the client libraries I have written two articles on Abiel about working with type sense using PHP as well as JavaScript so just go ahead and uh, have a look at those I guess you will find them use useful okay so yeah that's it from my end I think Sankalp you can take away now